Hello, lovely people of God. God bless you so much for liking our video, sharing. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, I will encourage that you subscribe to the channel. As we all know, we started a series on the believer's weapon and we spoke about thanksgiving. We learned a lot about thanksgiving. We learned that thanksgiving is a way that we show gratitude to God. We learned that with thanksgiving, it shouldn't only be when God has done something for you, but thanksgiving is supposed to be perpetual, whether good or bad, you are supposed to thank God. We also learned that thanksgiving brings multiplicity in our lives. And today, we want to tackle another weapon the Lord has given to us, which is imagination, which is imagination. So today, we are just going to delve into imagination and we will try and talk about imagination and prayer too. So we will just talk about imagination as a weapon the Lord has given to us and how we can rightfully use imagination in our prayers too. So basically that is what we are going to do in this episode. So we will start with imagination. I'll let my wife start then probably I'll just join you. As Christians, sometimes we may don't be, uh, when you think about imagination, what, how can imagination be a weapon but you have to understand that your what you think is, is can be a weapon you see god himself has access to your thoughts imagination should, is definitely a weapon you can use to speak to god we have to understand that god has access to our thoughts so uh, sometimes we might be there and and things something may just cross your mind i don't know whether you've had this experience but we're just thinking about something and all of a sudden god just made a way for you for example you were you are wondering how you could pay it's like oh i'm about to resume school is about to resume it just came to your mind that if my school fees, you need to have to take care of my school fees then all of a sudden maybe somebody your uncle or a relative will just call you that was going that, oh, you're about to resume. You're just uh, like you just saying they're about to resume. Then it's like, oh, yeah, so your school fees, how far we pay? Then he just settles it for you. And so it will just uh, sometimes just comes up as a shocker, but it's like it's because God even saw that it crossed your mind and something you you, you, you thought about and you decided that, oh, my school fees, so it means my school fees has to be settled. That would not even go about this. And God. Has access to you, so we saw it and he just made a way for you. So imagine you, we see, you are saying that God has access to your thoughts. So if God indeed sees what or knows what you think about, you should, you should make it a channel to speak to him concerning certain things. So we have to know that our imagination is powerful. God communicates to us through it. So we can also speak to him through it. And I hope I know that if we practice this every day, see yourself wherever you want to be, see yourself over there, your ministry, how you want to experience God, how you want to see God in your ministry, in your intercession, where you are making intercessions, you can imagine the things you want to experience, you want to see in people's lives in their country, pray for your country. Just see it. And whatever you want God to, to do for you, the when you are making intercessions. Make sure that you imagine those things, see those things come to pass in your life, and they will indeed come to pass in your life. As a man thinks and thinks that, so is he. Amen. Yeah, so to add up to what my, my wife said, I want us to understand that as human beings, we are what we think. And I don't know if you have personally realized it in your life. Anything that you think about, one way or the other, you see it happening in your life. If you think about um, an accident, one way or the other, you realize that it's either you get yourself involved in that accident or you nearly get yourself involved in an accident. It's because our minds or our thoughts are very powerful. And Bible makes us understand that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you think or imagine yourself as a poor person, you become a poor person. If you imagine yourself excelling an exams, you will excel. If you imagine yourself failing an exam, you will fail. Why? Because you are what you think. And 
just as my wife also said god has access to our our thoughts so it means that god is able to pick what we think about god is able to assess what we are imagining or what we we are perceiving or what we want and how things to be in our lives god is able to pick all these things and that is how it becomes a weapon for us so it means that our imaginations can either be positive or negative and when we have the positive imaginations you realize that everything seems to go on well for you whatever you imagine whatever you thought about has the ability of manifesting in your life anything you think about whether good or bad it has the ability to manifest in your life because our thoughts are doors to the realms of the spirit our imaginations are portals to the realms of the spirit so anything that you perceive can happen in your life that is the main reason why we are taking our time to explain why we should use our imaginations very well because our imaginations are weapons and we shouldn't belittle them and i have also come to understand that day in and day out the devil also throws certain negative imaginations to us there are times you wake up and you feel so down there are times you wake up and you feel like no my day is not going to be nice you feel like i'll have an accident you feel like i'm going to die you feel like something bad is going to happen to you you just begin to imagine and um, um, yourself involved in an accident you imagine yourself sick. most of these thoughts come from the devil most of these thoughts are projections from the enemy and one of the things i've realized is that anytime these thoughts come to your mind you are supposed to fight these negative thoughts with positive ones if you begin to think about failure replace it with success if it's an exams you are going to write in you begin to imagine yourself failing that very moment understand that it is a projection of the enemy and you need to fight it with good thoughts you need to fight it with positive imagination so the moment that thought comes to your mind then you begin to fight it with good thoughts you see yourself excelling you see yourself graduating these are ways we can fight the negative thoughts the devil suggests to us maybe the devil has been suggesting and um, delay in marriage the devil has been suggesting and um, um, divorce or marital struggles to you begin to fight it with positive thoughts begin to fight it with good thoughts begin to fight it with positive imaginations if you are able to do that things will go on well for you because god has access to your thoughts and our thought or imagination is a way of prayer it's a way we are able to communicate with the lord it is a language the holy spirit understands it is a language the lord understands that is why we need to put or prioritize our thoughts we need to make sure that our thoughts are godly we need to make sure that we are always thinking about things that are noble things that are pure we need to always be thinking about things that bring honor when we are able to do all these things i know that certain things that we are battling in our lives will just leave our lives because you are fighting it with positive thoughts okay so to other i think the scripture he also gave is a very strong one that's uh, as a man thinking in his heart, so is he, yes. And you should know that God himself even communicates to you through your imagination. Yes. So you can also communicate to him through it too. Yes. And what I have also realized that whatever you are doing or you want to achieve, let's say, and if somebody wants to do something, the, fir- the first thing the person will do is imagine it. So you should realize that the imagination is really powerful. Everything that you are even doing currently, you first imagined it before you even started making steps to do it. So that should make you understand that your imagination is really powerful. Before you do something, we imagine how you do it. In the same way, uh, Masban was saying that the devil even makes use of uh, the imagination. People, before people execute certain bad things or crimes and all that, they sit down and imagine it and plan it out for the the do those things. So in the same way, if you want to do something, for example, you want to start a business, firstly, you to come to your mind and you imagine, oh, I want to start selling bags. Then you think about how uh, uh, you the amount you want to use, how much you want to raise and all that before you start uh, making steps like physically and preparing yourself physically 
for that particular business. So in the same way, we have to realize we have to take note of the fact that our imagination is powerful. So just to add a little to the imagination when it comes to prayers or intercessions, you need to imagine what you are praying about. You need to imagine the results manifesting. So for instance, you are praying for someone to be saved. You just begin to imagine the person being saved. You begin to imagine the person going to church whilst praying. Maybe you are praying for a car. You begin to pray and imagine yourself with that car. So I want to encourage you in your prayers. Imagine what you are praying being materialized. God bless you so much. Make sure you like this video, you share it, and kindly subscribe to this channel if you haven't. If you also have any questions, you can just inbox us or you can just leave the questions in the comment section. We will do our possible best to answer you. God bless you so much.